It's located on two continents, its largest city was once the most powerful city in Europe, and it has cultural and linguistic roots in the steppes of Central Asia. Today we're talking about Turkey. Turkey is a country of approximately 85 million people, located at the crossroads of Europe and Western Asia. 97% of its territory lies on the peninsula known as Anatolia, in Western Asia, while 3% of its territory lies in the Thrace region of Southeastern Europe. Its neighboring countries are Georgia and Armenia to the northeast, Azerbaijan and Iran to the east, Iraq and Syria to the southeast, and Greece and Bulgaria to the northwest. As a peninsula, it's bounded by the Black Sea to the north, the Mediterranean Sea to the south, and the Aegean Sea to the west. Is Turkey part of the Middle East? Well, that depends on who you ask and how you define the Middle East. The Middle East usually corresponds with Western Asia, where 97% of Turkey is located. But because part of Turkey is located in Europe, and that includes part of its largest city, Istanbul, it's sometimes left out of definitions of the Middle East. Many Turks consider their country to be part of Europe and reject being defined as Middle Eastern. Like its Middle Eastern neighbors, Turkey is a largely Muslim country, with over 99% of the population registered with the government as Muslim. But that number includes a large number of people who are secular or only nominally Muslim. Turkey is officially a secular state with no state religion. Until the 11th century, what is now Turkey formed part of the core of the Byzantine Empire, also known as the Eastern Roman Empire. It was mainly Christian, people spoke Greek as a first or second language, and its largest city Istanbul was known as Constantinople, Europe's largest and most powerful city for centuries. The Byzantine Empire remained powerful until the 11th century, when the Seljuk Empire, ruled by Turks from Central Asia, conquered much of Anatolia, and many Turks began to settle there. This migration increased in the following century, when many Turks were fleeing from Mongol invasions. The Seljuk Turks in Anatolia, who had already formed a new sultanate separate from the Seljuk Empire, ruled over the much more numerous non-Turkic people, who gradually assimilated to their ruler's Turkic language and culture. So, the people of Turkey today are part of the Turkic civilization, culture, and language family that extends all the way to Central Asia and beyond. But genetically, they're not primarily Central Asian. They descend from all the various ethnic groups that have ruled and settled in the area throughout its history. Some European, some Middle Eastern, and some Central Asian. When the Sultanate later began to disintegrate into numerous small principalities, called Beyliks, one of them was ruled by the Ottomans, and it began to expand, growing into the Ottoman Empire. It gradually conquered more territory from the Byzantine Empire, culminating in the capture of Constantinople in 1453 AD. The Ottoman Empire continued to expand, at its peak controlling large parts of Europe, the Caucasus region, the Middle East, and North Africa, making it one of the largest empires in history. The Ottoman Empire collapsed during the 20th century, losing several wars, including World War I. After World War I, the Allied powers partitioned the Ottoman Empire into spheres of influence, occupied by different Allied countries. Turkish nationalists rejected the occupation and division of Anatolia, and fought against the Allies, and against the Ottoman government when it tried to stop them. The nationalists were led by Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, who became the first president of the New Republic of Turkey in 1923. Atatürk made numerous reforms to turn Turkey into a modern nation-state, making the state secular, giving women equal social rights, and reforming the Turkish language to remove Persian and Arabic influences, which included switching from an Arabic-based script to a Latin-based script. The modern state is divided into 81 provinces. They're grouped into seven larger geographic regions, each of which has its own distinct characteristics. Marmara. This region lies in the northwestern part of Turkey, and is the one region that has territory in Europe. It's the most populous region, and in terms of industry, it's the most developed. In the middle of the region, there's the Marmara Sea, which borders most of the region's provinces. In the province of Çanakkale, to the south of the Marmara Sea, lies the ruins of the ancient city of Troy, and to the north of the Marmara Sea lies Istanbul province, home to Istanbul city, one of the largest cities in the world, today's incarnation of Constantinople. With its population of around 15.5 million people, Istanbul is by far Turkey's largest city. It's filled with remnants of the great empires that have ruled there, like Topkapi Palace and Dolmabahce Palace, Hagia Sophia, or Hagia Sophia Mosque, which used to be a church, the Blue Mosque, officially known as the Sultan Ahmed Mosque, and so on. There's also the Grand Bazaar, one of the oldest and largest covered markets in the world. 
The city of Istanbul straddles two continents, with parts of the city on both the European side and the Asian side of the Bosphorus Strait. You can cross the Bosphorus Strait on foot using one of the city's numerous bridges, but it's over 1.5 kilometers, or almost a mile, so you may want to take a ferry instead. The Aegean Region Located in western Turkey to the south of the Marmara region, this region has close historical connections to Europe. It's best known for its historically Greek cities, such as Ephesus in Izmir province, which is famous for its Temple of Artemis, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. It's also known for its natural wonders, like Pamukkale, which means cotton castle and is known for its mineral-rich thermal pools, as well as its coastal resort towns like Marmaris and Kushadasu. Central Anatolia this is the second largest region in Turkey, and is referred to as the Granary of Turkey due to its agricultural production. Central Anatolia is home to one of the most well-known places in Turkey, Cappadocia. In a typical year, 2.5 million visitors travel there to see its otherworldly landscapes, especially from the air by taking a tour in a hot air balloon. Cappadocia is located around 300 kilometers to the southeast of Ankara, the capital of Turkey. People often mistakenly assume that Istanbul is the capital of Turkey because it's the largest and most famous city in the country. But since the collapse of the Ottoman Empire and foundation of the modern state, Ankara, Turkey's second largest city, has been the capital. There you can find the tomb of Atatürk, the founding father of the modern state. Of course, there are also some not-so-modern sites, like Ankara Castle, which was built by the ancient Phrygians. The Black Sea Region Turkey has 1,329 kilometers of coastline along the Black Sea, most of which lies within this region. It's one of Turkey's main sources of fish, especially anchovies, called hamsi in Turkish, which are mainly caught in the winter and are considered Turkey's national fish. I've heard them referred to as the Pearl of the Black Sea, and they are a huge part of Turkish cuisine in the Black Sea region. This region may have a long coastline, but its terrain is rugged and mountainous, which you can see in this photo of the Greek Orthodox monastery, Sumela Monastery, one of the Black Sea region's most famous sites. Eastern Anatolia This is a region of superlatives. It's the largest region in Turkey. It borders more countries than any other region, namely Armenia, Georgia, Iran, Azerbaijan, and Iraq. It has the coldest climate, and it has the highest elevation. Turkey's tallest mountain, Ada, is located there. Turkey's biggest lake, Lake Wan, is also found there. It's known for the legendary Lake Wan monster of Armenian folklore. Similar to the Loch Ness monster, some people claim it's not legendary, that they've actually seen it. Or, you know, maybe that's just a rock. Southeastern Anatolia. This is Turkey's smallest region in terms of size, but definitely not in terms of its cuisine. Turkish people sometimes say that once they had tasted the food of this region, nothing else ever tasted as good to them again. This includes its variety of kebabs, like urfa kebab, eggplant or patlijan kebab, and buryan, as well as sweet desserts like shubiet and baklava. Some say that baklava originated in the southeastern town of Gaziantep, an ancient city first settled thousands of years ago. It's also the most important place for pistachio cultivation in Turkey, pistachios being an important ingredient of baklava. The Mediterranean region. This is the southernmost region of Turkey, bordered by the Mediterranean Sea to the south. It's a largely mountainous region, covered by a mountain chain called the Toros Mountains, stretching from east to west. But it's the narrow coastal strip that makes this one of the most touristic regions of Turkey, especially in Antalya with its all-inclusive holiday resorts. If you're like me and you get bored on the beach, there are many historical and natural wonders to see in the area, which make for fascinating excursions. These include places like Alanya Castle, Mount Olympus, not the one in Greece by the way, Lake Salda, Manaugat Waterfall, and Kaleche. Because of its location at the edge of the Middle East, and because of stereotypes of the Middle East, Turkey is often assumed to be warm year-round, but there are indeed several different climate types in different areas of the country. The steppes of central Anatolia have a cold, semi-arid climate, and are cold and snowy in winter. Much of eastern Anatolia has a similar but less arid continental climate, with winter temperatures as low as minus 20 degrees Celsius. The record low temperature was a bone-chilling minus 46.4 degrees Celsius back in 1990. In the Black Sea region in the north, there's a distinct climate called Black Sea climate, really an oceanic climate, which is warm but not hot in summer, and cool but not freezing in winter. The Mediterranean region has a typical Mediterranean climate in the coastal areas with hot, dry summers and mild, rainy winters. But areas further inland have a semi-arid continental climate with cold, snowy winters. 
That's right, Turkey's climate is diverse enough that even within the Mediterranean region, not everywhere has a Mediterranean climate. It's also hard to generalize about the people of Turkey. The national language and mother tongue of most Turkish citizens is the Turkish language. But there are also numerous minority languages, including Kurdish, which is spoken by millions of people, especially in eastern and southeastern Turkey. Of course, they learned the national language Turkish from a young age as well. Kurdish is a language and also an ethnicity. In Turkey, though, there are no official statistics kept on ethnicity. Muslim citizens are simply classified as Turks, while only religious minorities, mainly Christians and Jews, are classified separately. But some other ethnicities are the Zaza, who are sometimes considered Kurdish, the Laz and Circassian people, who originate from the Caucasus region, and others. Also, due to the Syrian civil war, a continuous stream of Syrian refugees has been accepted into Turkey since 2011. As of 2022, around 3.7 million Syrians are living in Turkey. All of this geographic, ethnic, and cultural diversity makes Turkey an incredibly fascinating country for anyone interested in Europe, the Middle East, or Central Asia. If you're from Turkey, do you see your country as part of Europe or part of the Middle East, or maybe something else? I think a lot of viewers would be interested to know, so leave your answers in the comments. If you want to see videos on this channel one week early and with no ads, consider becoming a channel member. You can click the join button for more information. And check out this video on Lebanon, another Mediterranean country that's not too far from Turkey. I guarantee that you'll learn something new about its geography, culture, or history.